كايا يخسرتيني تشتكت يوهان قلت شي شو تشيني خاصتيني يا اوا داتي تخوة تنك بايقي ادي اوا قائي اختشيي انا خوي اختوى سكو يا حدج خنكيين حدج خنكي ساني حسك اخسكو واسا كي حتخلا انش يا اوا اختوى سكو ادات اوا يو حس خقخ خقخلا آدي يا حاسيس كو حس قنخوي توسا آني قوو يا اوا اختوى تي يا يكي اوه اداتي تخو تنك دات يخصا اوه جاكود يده قوش اياده ياشك هنستن اوه حق هستي يا قنخ دانا اوه ادات اوه يتخو تنك يا يدد خواستین آخو آخ آن هست تو یه یتیه دان و وش آخ اوه دکت و شکت خود ادکی آیا آقا هست کاو آقا سا و او دانه تین یا یه دت جست یه گنگی آها جیو و شکت خود یه دیگری ات خا جست یه گنگی آو تو سکو او هیو قطعی قش هایو قتنگی تین وشت زخن قا وچین که هتل آنچ یه او ادادی تختنگ ادیا و نق نخوی اتویه یتی یا هایو قتنگی قا اختو اسکو ادیا و نه چشت کت دچیخ تو تی واسق قطیو هان قشی تو وات آیا یا یا نخوی یا ها ایتی یا نخ که هست تگخلا آن حد چند کیان یه آوا اخت و تی ون قلین خو اخ خن خوی قان هست تو یه نتیجن کنید خد قات قش تایگ خو اخ آتلنش کش می خد قاو خید خیالات تکتیهن آوا هست آنی جود گد و آن گون نقا اویش دکت یه ده ایا هست و گوگ و آن تقینی جادوسا او هست اید هست جو دکت هست جو دات هست تو از گوگ هست وسطی که که نخا اوی شود زنگ هو اوی اوکلت زن قنی او آخ قاد یادی دید قاخ نقا اوه اقده وشیخ دو یده او سطین قایه او سقا یا اختواس گو گو خد سطی چو ای این کل اختواس گو ای قوده یا یه قوستی یه اوه اده شدسینی یا ها قوستی گل چیش اخی دیزا آخی واسا یه توچ گلی تواس گو لنگت خین اخی و خیل ادگی آیاتی اید خواه گناه چیش آنها ختای خوان لین هتلیت که هست یوخ اتانگی و هاجو دیت آنگون یکو؟ آخ و جو جو دو جو دو ات ایا آخ یه اوه ویش کشنیک قشلی سیس کوکه جو دو هست دو ایت جو دو ات سکوکه اتاق؟ یه اوه They were attacked. Hey, well, I guess. Okay. Uh, we're on Una. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. 
That's the way six country. One arrow. Ah. That yaksa. Well, yeah, that yak away way. Can get to u. Yak away has to gin. Way day. A car yat a yak has our our took. That yat a yak. Yat a yak. Well, chalk away. Quite a good thing, get away, has to toss a good go, has our yehi. A ga has Judah art. Okay. Um, okay, so what was I talking about? We're saying that possibly with. Uh, the language we can, I think you said wuch, uh, and then I heard khan, so love each other. Wuch tut se khan, yeah. Wuch tut se khan. Love each other in the language. I think so. What else? You mentioned Cyril George. Yeah, Cyril George, because he told, he told this story uh, in Angoon. They were kind of suddenly attacked. And uh, the people who attacked were trying to take people to make them into slaves. And so they all scattered and were scared. And this one guy got away. And then he heard the cries of his son. And so he ran back down because he's, and he told his son, um, I want to be a slave rather than live without you. So. I think, you know, like some of the early accounts say we weren't nice and we didn't love each other. I think they didn't, they didn't understand us. But I guess what I was saying is I really, I was thinking a lot about kindness lately and just what I guess we would call um, generosity. And I just think, um, my biggest hope is that our descendants will look back on us and say, gee, they were kind people. Boy, they were sure were kind people. And so I think uh, being kind and open with each other and supporting each other, like it takes a conscious shift, I think, because of so many things that have happened to, to peoples and, you know, so much loss, so much uh, violence towards indigenous peoples, and then also so much like just trying to recover so much stuff at the same time. And then being converted over to like corporate shareholders and stuff, it really makes it challenging because I've been engaged in some conversations. It's not the healthiest place to be talking to people, but some folks are like, well, we don't get enough now because they let the descendants get shares. And I'm like, oh, well, so like sharing with our children and grandchildren is bad? And they said, oh, they could get it when we all die. And I thought, boy, that's a long ways from maybe how we used to do things. But it's just stuff I was thinking about. And then, uh, and then I thought of that story. Yeah. Any thoughts, reflections? Language questions. Uh, speaking of love and kindness, did you happen to mention anything about Walter Soboloff? No, not today. Well, it might be a good thing to mention since tomorrow is his day. Oh, Yachan <laughs> Uh, away. She'd cook a yahoo tea. Ha in you, 
Osa Achia Cotune, do you a tongue? Cling it in a cutlet, cock in a ไว้กาวกัสกุชกจินคาดคานัสกะดูชวยตุกะทากุขุสติไทกะเจตเวอะคะขุนุกะเดนยุเขวะทันวิชิตกะขุอูขะขุทะสวะอัตกัสตะก
Uh, Story and Nash did wonderful things. Um, Nats Tla and Sha Chu Kut, they did wonderful things. Uh, but I would say I went to a language immersion probably in, well, right around 2000, the summer of, the, of 2000, we were in this building in classes, or maybe it was in the Hendrickson building, there used to be classrooms there. And then we would eat in the cafeteria over there. And we're supposed to just live in the language. And that's when I met Selena Everson and Jude Pegid and Ken Austin and um, uh, a lot of people that I just started to learn from. There were several others who were there. I can't remember everybody who was there. I know there's some people that I still talk to who were there. And I remember I run into people. I was like, oh, yeah, you were there. I kind of forgot who was there. I was like, oh, 25 years ago, right? Or 24, I guess. But then I started going to these language immersions and it started to really click. Like, so I remember when came out and I was, we were trying to use that, we're trying to use the yellow verb dictionary, but we quickly realized those of us who were kind of learning at that time that we didn't know how to talk. Like even if we look stuff up, we couldn't quite put it together into like we didn't know how to change it. We didn't know how to say, okay, I looked up this verb and it says like yati. Then I was trying to say like it was, I'm still saying yati. Or, um, but anyways, yeah, so they, I attended the fifth anniversary celebration of the house in Sik. I think that's what it was. Shitkakwa Nakahiti. And I was just a dude who was going. And, um, and the, some of the people who were there from Sitka, like I was listening to Walter Soboloff, I was just blown away by his English, by his Tlingit, like he was just so amazing. And uh, I was just in awe, just watching him up there and he's got his chilcat blanket on and the dog salmon hat and, you know, and I, the first time I met him was when my grandfather was dying in 1997. And he came to, we were all staying at the Driftwood Lodge and he came to see us just to console us. And I thought it was such a nice thing. And he spoke Tlingit to us. I didn't know hardly anything. And then not long after that, he sent a picture of my great grandfather to my uncle. And he was a young man. So he knew him when he was young. So that was really, really neat. And then, uh, so just watching and then they sent people out and they picked a few people to respond. Has to tell us a young They wanted people to respond. And so they said, they tapped me on the shoulder and said, we want you to go up and respond to him. And I said, oh, okay. And then my heart starts beating fast and I'm, I'm listening to what he says, but I'm also trying to think of what am I gonna say? Like what, what would I have to say to the legendary Walter Sobolov? And so I kind of had a, a rough outline and I got up there well, he got done and then they called us up, you know, and I was, I can't remember who else, I can't remember how, very many details. Of it. But I do remember I walked up and the lights were bright and the place was full of people. And I got nervous and I looked at Walter and he's just like this incredible elder. I was like, what? Then I look over and there's this row of clan leaders who at that time, I think they were probably all speakers, right? And just everything, I just, all I remember is like everything I thought of saying just went completely out of my mind. And I was just like, oh no. So I went back to this standard, like how, you know, and I was taught, I had already been taught at that time that you're not supposed to introduce yourself, you're just supposed to say something. And Nora, she used to really challenge us. She'd be like, I don't want to see you like looking at your, <laughs> you're supposed to write it down or read it from the <laughs> paper. And so um, I hadn't done those things. And then all of a sudden I forgot everything. So I just said, please forgive me. I'm studying Klingit. And Herman Davis is over there and he just yells out, it will be. And I felt fine. And I talked and it was, um, it was amazing. So yeah, Walter, he was fun. He was so fun to talk to. He, um, I think what I'll do is I'll post uh, one of the videos from uh, Jacques. 
Alice Taff, of Kajakti and Wushjehu Ish. And what I'd like you to do, I know we've got this story we're working on, we've got these other things. Just listen and read along with this conversation. It's really incredible. So what you're going to see is I think they're sort of talking and they're trying to figure out what they want to talk about. And they, they talk about Duktut. They talk about the people going to war. And so it's pretty fitting for uh, with Veterans Day just passed. And then, uh, then I like there's this point where Walter says, like, I'm going to bring it. This is I'm going to bring it. And then he just he goes off. And he kind of just takes over the conversation and he just says some pretty amazing stuff. I made a little poster with some of the words he said during this thing. Um, but as you watch it and as you listen to it, don't, I guess, look at it as a whole language piece and find a couple of things that you think are really wonderful or interesting for us to talk about on Monday. So I'm going to cheese for the reminder of the great Dr. Walter Silver. I got a funny memory of Kajok I had the privilege of my grandma bringing me along to a, um, it was a board meeting or something in the old Sea Alaska building once, and Kajok was there, and they had a snack break, and someone was handing out bananas. Mm -hmm. He was really excited for it, and he was mentioning to someone, he told the whole group, how would you say, like, undot. Because he's like, I'm 100 years old. I don't know if I buy green bananas. I'll be around long enough to see him get ripe. <laughs> <laughs> we were at this other meeting, and we had gotten this big pot of money that came into the tribes. And there was like fighting because it was wellness money. And Search was mad because it didn't go to them. And at this, everybody was mad. And then we're got together and everybody's just arguing. It's such a tense meeting. And I said, this is literally like wellness money. Can't we just think of good things to do with it? And everybody keeps fighting. And then like 10 minutes later, Walter's there and he goes, this is wellness money. Shouldn't we just stop fighting and do good things with it? And everyone's like, yes. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I mean, that's who he is. OK. Um, any language questions you folks have? Anything you've been thinking about? I'm going to bring it way which it you hadunk ach twasi gu wasa dua sauka hwasa. Oh, I forgot how to say it. What I was going to say. Oh, I want to know how to say that. <laughs> oh, I think he said adehat kwati. Adehat adehat kwati? Hat. Or I think you say ha de kwati. I'm gonna bring it here. Okay. That was cool. Yeah, and you'll probably find it'll, you'll see it in you'll see it that moment in the recording. Just take it was something like that. But I remember it was like, I'm gonna bring it. Like he was just then he did because he could back it up. Like it was. Cool. Ah. I've got a language question, Kune. Okay, we got one in the room, and then we'll do yours. Oh, okay, sure, sure, yep. Rich, there's a Kuik in Sitka coming up, and I have someone that's trying to make fire bowls for them, and the labels, but they're asking how you can write, like, in memory of, I was thinking, like, Ka Daki Tusha Oh. Uh, yes. Yeah, we, we think of them. Okay. Yeah, so you'd say their name, so, like, Jim... Um, you could say dot you two to we're thinking of them. Oh, the two to so mm -hmm. oh, so we okay, like we think of them regularly. Mm -hmm. That and then you could say, um, uh, that ka doc is another one, like we're remembering them, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, and you could say ha tu yena teach, they're always in our thoughts. Um, yeah, I, I think you do have some options. And so you just wouldn't want to use something like a ka da ka se waha. Because like, oh yeah, it's them. Like it's like you forgot them and you remembered them. Mm -hmm. So like hatu yena teach is like where they're always in our thoughts. Um, 
dot you to to saat we're, th we're thinking of them regularly is it dot mm -hmm. and then but then that ka doc mm -hmm. that doc part is all about like bringing them out from somewhere too mm -hmm. so it kind of depends if that's the metaphor that you want that's why it's on that aka da khatsewa ha like i brought it got brought out of this the depths of my memory is basically what it's saying so it does sort of imply that they may have been a little bit forgotten mm -hmm. so the dock is something i probably wouldn't mm -hmm. put on there oh. Uh, yeah, I wanted to just uh, wondering about. Yeah, I know you talked about this uh, not too long ago, but about sa and where it goes in a question. Mm -hmm. um, and so, how would you say, um, just for an example, uh, uh, why should we respect people? Oh, yeah, okay. So, uh, well, I guess let's see. Let's see. what did I do? Name dot you to to chat. Just so I can get this um, on there. Name dot. Um, what did I say? How to unit teach. Uh, those are two ways of thinking of remembering someone at a kui on a fire dish, and then. So, I guess I would end up with a manach sawe, and then uh, why do we respect people or things? Was that the question? Yeah, yeah. So, I, well, I guess that answers it already. Uh, I, I was just wondering where the sawe would go, but uh, it it doesn't go at the end. It goes right after the the manach. Eh? Yeah, and so like with manach sawe, it's because some of them they can move around a little bit. So like if you say dasa, uh, if you could put something in there, so you could say uh, what's it for dot yis sa, and if you put something in between da and sa, this t pops up, right? So this would be what for. Uh, this would be what, and then you could say dot. Oh, this is a riddle. So I think it has these riddles, uh, which I don't know if they've been studied a whole lot. Like it's a question, but it does not. It's not supposed to be answered. So I'd say dot ya katangi, and how would we translate that? Precious than our language. Uh, say it one more time, Hannah. What is more precious than our language? Yes. What is what is more precious than our language? And so, sometimes, like uh, the old people would ask, they would have these like it's a question that's supposed to. I guess your response is supposed to be like, oh yeah, right? Like I I don't know. I don't think you're supposed to answer it. Like they just sort of say them to. Um, so that one can uh, move and like a do sa, but usually you can only have like a, a small thing in between them, right? So you could say um, a do eat sa kuwaha. And so this is a who question. And then what is a do eat sa kuwaha? How do we translate that? Whose turn is it? So I don't see a whole lot of separation, I guess. I'm trying to think of other examples where that's... Uh, uh, I think my experience is you can really, like, so there's kunsa is how much or how many. Un dana 
sir we lusha ke i'm making fun of people ha uh g d s good there how do we translate that coming up at least starting with how much money is the holy coffee <laughs> well we got the l here so this is oops is the bad or yeah so bad men of people mm -hmm. <laughs> i've been on i've been okay anyways but um yeah i don't know do you know of other examples where the sa gets kind of separated well i was thinking of kunsa but the other one I was wondering about was masa, but that doesn't get separated. So if, if I want to say something like, uh, how do we respect people? Uh, okay, yeah. So with, with say, smaller, but one yes. word or something? I'm yeah, also, okay. Yeah. I can only think of like nouns and stuff, going, because then you could say, um, you'll see people, they'll go, wasa ha tu wu, 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 wu ke. Wake out, right? How how good we felt at that time, but now it's become a statement, right? And so the other, sometimes these become statements instead of questions, and that's something that I think. I I think it just depends on the context and the construction, I guess, because you're not asking that like how good did we feel at that time, right? Like, like that's a weird. It's just not really a question. But the other ways you'll see this is you'll see things like, um, okay, let's say, at uh, Haswutlikas. So they were migrating. And then you might say, we at playing, or we at shunk. You do a song. Ah, ye haswuti. Kun talk suck shiwe. A ka away. A key day. Oops. Haswoku. So here it, it kind of becomes a statement as well. So if we say atasvuklagas, they all were migrating around. We at shunk yuduasak. What is that saying? Is that an island? An island. It's called shunk. It's called. Shunk. Ah, ye haswuti. They were there. They all were there. Kun tak sakshwe. How many years something? See, so this, if you said that on its own, you could say maybe how many years, but in this context. I would say for many years. And this is how you could do sort of an ambiguous amount of time. We just know it was a long time. So you could do this thing as well. Uh, they were there for many days. And I guess the sakshwe kind of does it, but you could say sawe. You could say I guess there's one where two words go in between it. Kun yagir anachsawe for how many days? Um, so, so is it like a is it like a the kun talk stuck stuck away? Is it like a how many years? We don't know. Is that what it means? Yeah. So the so what you have so there is you have like 
sa, which is a, a kind of a question marker. And then you have kshe, which is like perhaps. And then you also have this one giwe, which is like maybe. And you could kind of smush them all together, and this is where you get sakshawe. And there's some variations on this, and it's just really saying like it's kind of an unknown. It's an unknown thing, like maybe for how many. Um, and in this context, yeah, it's saying it was for many years. We're just not exactly sure how many. And so, can you use a, a sakshawe for other kinds of uh, question things like? Uh, uh, I don't know uh, how. Yeah, like how. Uh, how did it, I guess you'd end up with like, how did it ever happen? Because now what it shows is you're really, you're very curious about the whole thing, I think. Maybe. How do we translate that? Was it and and then they went north. They boated or drove north. Yeah. Okay. And then they took that name and became Shankwidi. And then they were called Shankwidi as well. So. Okay. Okay. Good cheese. Good questions. Okay. We have uh, in our story. Oh, no. Oh. Still, uh, still do uh, still. Ah, ye has yet tea. Shankri do a sock. We do we tan. Naki aya a ding ye tea. It's up on the north side of Prince of Wales Island, Shunk. But yeah, they, they call themselves Shunkwidi down there. Ah, ah, Gunjish. We are Roberts. Um, yeah, Roberts family. Yeah, so that's the thing of Shunk is where you get Shunkwidi. Uh, but then if you go Shunk Ka Adi, you end up getting Shunkwidi. Which is really fun to think of how these names came to be. And um, I think it's fun to study that stuff. Uh, just, just like, just like, took, yeah. Um, yeah, what? Uh, that, uh, 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 city of Wrangell, uh, naming their new road, uh, Shachkina Deye. Yekwa Sach Kinadeye. Okay. Uh road over the muskeg. Oh, Trail. Shach 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 Dey. Uh Shach. It's not Shach. Okay, Shach. Should be short, yeah. Shach. Shach Shach. Is it is it did you pinch the K? I don't think so. Okay, Shach Kina. Shach Kinadeye. Yeah, well, and uh, literally the the uh, trail over the swamp. Yeah. Uh, they just called me and asked if I would uh, say it. I said, "What? Okay." Oh, okay. Shachk kinade ye. And there's a road here called Kanata de ye. Which should not be called Canada Day or anything like that. Uh, they call it Canada. Canada <laughs> Day, right? We just got to do little, little adjustments. There's another road here, which should be called Yandukin Drive. Uh, Yandukin. I, I think it's Yandukin. <laughs> Yandukin. Um, we're getting there, right? It's baby steps, and then like. But I think strong educational opportunities, teaching people it's okay to, like, we got to be careful so we're not making fun of people um, and the way they say things. But we just say, oh, yeah, this is, or else they won't let us name anything after, you know, and then we should be naming things. So, okay. 
Men det siges. Better if they're mispronouncing Tlingit than not speaking Tlingit at all, I suppose. That's right. I think so. Okay, we have an undocumented word in this sentence, and um, I'm going to tell you what it is right now. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to have to put it in a dictionary. But there's this word seen is a food cache. I just have to tell you that because you're not going to find it anywhere. Oops, and I also should share the audio. Hold on. What's the difference between seen and chash? Uh, probably dialect. Probably dialect, because okay. what is interesting is I do believe chash, which is also jash or jish, is a borrowed word from another language. Yeah, yeah, you have But then we have like jishkat, which is, I think, jishkat. Uh, but this, but it might refer to the, there's a way to do fish in, Chil, in the Chilkat area where you kind of half smoke your fish and then long time ago especially when the area was just colder you would bury it and it would stay frozen and then you could take it out and cook it and it would finish cooking and it was i think that's called jish i think jish hook i think it's called okay anyways uh, yeah. elder chish yeah, chit. Yeah, so chit. Chit. Ah, yeah. Oh, So now we have uh, this mysterious noun solved. So with that, kadein sin ayi tu wu. So again, to walk through, um, there's this one person who is blind, and the people say, "We're just going to seat you here. We're going to leave you." behind uh, as one person on our in the camp Rahak on iti kedain sin aye tu wu what is the rest of this saying what's our estimation here? Or situated there yeah so we I didn't hear that. Oh. Oh, the, the food cache is like situated in there. Yeah, we put it there. Like so when you got ye tu u is ye tu u is we put it there. So kadein sin a ye tu u. Food cache so I guess word carefully food cache there we put it. I thought it was saying that the food cash was uh, good or well in some way, but uh, I forgot that Kedain means carefully as well. Yeah, so whenever we when you have something that ends with Dane, like Kedain, Shush Kedain, Shitsin Dane, Kedain, oh, I guess Kedain, Gedain, Ishan Dane, what are some other Danes that you've heard? Nik Dane, Chun Dane. Uh, it's going to affect the verb. So there, there should be a verb coming, and it's going to affect the verb. Uh, and the way that these ones work... It's more of an adverb than an adjective. It is an adverb. So kedain. So what you end up with is you have a verb root plus dane. So what is our verb root for kedain? Okay. Good. Yes. So that is good, which means well or carefully uh, and then you could also say shush kedain not good yeah so not good evilly is that how i don't know how you'd spell evilly or if you could even say it uh we're making up words you can spell it however it needs to be spelled that's right. Okay. We, we use we did with evil intention. Ooh. 
Uh, let's see, what else did I say? Oh, Tlagaudain. I didn't say that one, but I did just now. Loudly. So, loudly. And some of them have actually the classifier included. Like here's another one. Strongly. With difficulty or difficultly. Um, Ishandane. Painfully, or with intention to cause pain. This one. I don't know what the tone is in this one. Isn't Chuna wound? Yeah. <laughs> Good day. Splendidly. Beautifully. That'd be underlined. No. What's your gay? I guess, oh, this, there, bigly. In the, in the spirit of American politics. Uh, let's see, what are some other ones? Are there any others that we know? Let's see. Oh, Kudzi Dean, that's a good one. On Dean. Amazingly. Oops. Angrily. Is that the same Kuds that's in Kudzi Del Quran? Kudzi. Oh, okay. There is Kud Kudzi is a charred thing, yeah. Is that what's in the name for that? Kudzi Da. Oh. Kudzi Da. Yeah. So Kudzi is either a comet or a, what do they call it? Charred piece of, some, a burning thing, is that a right? Burger? Yeah, that's it. Okay, um, oh, that's probably enough, okay. We need more. So, but when you have like kedin or kudzidin or it, like there should be a verb coming. And so usually, and this is something where we have, you can have other things in between it, and then you got to get to the verb and then sort of, and so this again goes like carefully food, cash, there we put it. And so we carefully put a food, cash, there. Like, it's up to you. Like, so our intention here is just to understand this story as ourselves. But you will probably, if you keep doing this work in the language, will become a translator of something and someone will want you to publish this or send it to people and you'll have to think about the word order. Chan. How are we going to spell? Ach. Ach. Well, ach. I don't think it's ach, I think it's ach. A-A-X. A-A-Underline X. Atcha ach to hande gach to sa ad. Um, 
and check the chat. Good one. Oh. Okay. We do have the verb. I'm going to add a high tone there. Future verbs that are future verbs are always going to be long and high. One more word, I think. And Yay! Atcha achtu hande gachtutla art. Okay, translators. Food. Is that like towards? Maybe the opposite of that. Oh, come back. <laughs> From it? From it. To again or still? Maybe two. And me? Here we go. Is that the plural for walking? That would be Gachtu Aunt. Oh. So it the classifier switches and it is a different verb root than to walk. It's a carrying verb. I, I had the wrong classifier, but I came up with we will cause to come or go. Yeah, yeah. We I will... had an S classifier instead of an L classifier. I don't know if that changes anything. So, so tla'at is uh, a carrying verb for personal items or luggage or things that you, I guess, things that you carry kind of carefully, maybe. And so we're going to bring some, so again, like when we sort of rearrange this, we might say, we're also going to bring some food here. Okay. Good Two words. Hidi, like hide, but. Hide doka. It's a verb. The whole thing's one verb phrase, but it's made up of two words. Hide daya duka. I will accept daya duka. The committee will accept Ayodhya. We need one word right before it. Let me check the chat. There it is. Yay. Yay Dayadukha. In storytelling, you'll see this used quite a bit. Uh, Does it mean somebody said it? Yeah, it is being said to him. Right? Mm -hmm. So whoever, like, so this is an interesting verb. Like, let's just check. We should do this in the, in the notes. So like, this is something that does come up a lot. Ye daya dukha. And so this is, uh, if we sort of pull this one apart, we end up with zero da ya uh, well do zero ka. And so what this, you know, so what we have, this is thematic. We could pull out our little color chart and say, let's make that a, oh wait, pink, also pink, red, blue, purple, and brown. So I would do this so that I could, uh, oops, so I could see which kinds of things I could change, right? So I could, this is, for this particular verb, this is to say something to someone. 
and it's a specific thing. Like, so we're going to have quotation marks around whatever is going to be said. Uh, high fluency speakers will have you diodika and ye diodika, depending on where the quotation is. If it's immediately before the verb, you'll probably have you. If it comes separated or after it, you'll usually have ye. So you could say ye khat diyadukha. People are saying to me this. You could say ye yi dai ya kha kha. I am saying this to you. So this is an in-the-moment type of thing. It's really interesting because there's a very closely related verb, which is ye yawaka, and also ye ayawsaka. And I would say just pay attention to these three to see how and when they are used. So this means um, they said this. And then you're usually going to have some sort of quotation mark sort of statement. So it's like these exact words is what you're talking about. And then this is the same thing, but it's saying they said this to them. So this is another one. Like if you're using story, if you're using Klinge to tell stories, you could say, and then, you know, it's really good to learn how to use these. So if we took this one and did the same thing, we have a, uh, ya, uh, well, we have you, we have zero, se, ka. So then we could do the same thing where we have blue and pink. And in this case, there's our conjugation stuff. It's gray. Here, this is red. This is purple, and this is brown. And so the reason for doing this is saying we could change the red, that's who's doing the verb. We could change the blue, that's who the verb is happening to. So again, like we have these lists of things. We have these object pronouns, these subject pronouns. And this is important in storytelling, right? And then I said to you, ye e yachsaka. I said this to you. Right? Ye chet yaisikha. You said this to me, right? And now, um, and it's just important, I think, to know how to use these. They're very, very handy. And just to see, like, when does it switch to this? So now we're going to get what is being said to this person. And my guess is we haven't named any other characters. So someone is saying this to the blind person. Question. Uh -huh. As I was listening to this, I heard the duh as a class as classifier instead of as a subject. Mm -hmm. How is there a good way to tell the difference when you're Did listening I... to this and it's all kind of smushed? Yeah, yeah. Did I... So like just like I think the more you do this work, your ear really starts to fine tune on some of those vowels. So like daya du ka, like it's du in there, as opposed to daya dika or daya dakha. And so part of it is knowing the verb and which ones are going to be uh, like I was just sort of going through a different verb. So you could say and and then you could say um, and uh, and you could say so these are do we know what this verb is the kids verb have we ever heard that one Sewing? Yes, it is sewing. And this one is an interesting one because uh, if you say, if you wanted to change these, you'd say a um, 
And so it is qa, but it switches to qis in the, in the imperfective. So khaqis would be, everybody know how to translate this one? I sew. I am sewing it. And this one, so this, the, it switches to a declassifier to boot out the object. There's a, a few verbs that do this. So then this would be, I am sewing, just as an activity. It's not like this, there's probably uh, some mittens or some moccasins or a vest or something. You're sewing something. And then what would a qiz be then? They're sewing it. And a daqiz. They are sewing something in general. They that is not specified. Just as an activity. Yeah, and the case, you cannot tell the difference whether this is sewing it or sewing as an activity. And so part of this, as we listen to more Shingit, is catching this da and du. And just sort of really can't, and like the, when you start listening to a speaker like this, it goes by so fast that it's really easy to, to get them a little bit, to hear one instead of the other. But the more you do this, it's also like fine tuning your ear to catch these subtle differences. Can I ask a question? Um, so with the uh, case, uh, would there normally be a, would it be like a khashtatihi case? Like, would there normally be uh, something that you're sewing? Yeah. There? You, you would usually name the thing. Yeah. Because, yeah, like, same with in English. Like, if you say, what are they doing? They're sewing it. It just sounds kind of weird if, if you just said that, right? And, and so, but it could work for uh, uh, who is sewing the moccasins, then you wouldn't have to name the moccasins. Then you'd say, um, So that would be the instance where you wouldn't normally, you wouldn't have to name it. And it's not like you have to, but you normally would. In the daya duka gwash ach guk klesh uke, but I don't, uh, I, I don't hear the daya at all. Oh, really? Yeah. But he, he says it very fast. Maybe I just need my like Xbox headset and just plug it into my phone. Well, when you do this work, like that's a really good point. Like we're doing this, uh, wherever you're at on Zoom for us in the classroom, we have these little, and even though these things are close to us, these little speakers, it is so much better to do this work with headphones on in a quiet space uh, and to have some pretty okay headphones, especially like if, if this is work you're going to do, like if you say, okay, I want to become really good at this, there is probably a thousand hours of recorded Tlingit out there. Um, I want to just become someone who helps publish the Tlingit language and create stories and, and stuff like that. Like, you're going to need some good headphones and you're going to have to take really good care of your ears because um, it's exhausting work. Uh, I think if you're really good you could do like five minutes in an hour. And so if someone gives you a recording, here's Susie James telling 14 Raven stories and it's about 95 minutes long. So that means uh, it's probably gonna take you a couple hundred hours to get that done. And it's exhausting work and it's intimidating work but it also, you take huge steps when you do this type of work. Like everyone I know who has stuck with it and really have gone out on their own and done this, and you don't, you're never on your own. Like we do this stuff together. 
But like sometimes I know people who said, yeah, I could do it. And then somebody gives them a recording and pays them the money. And then a year goes by and they haven't done the thing yet because it's, it's tough, I think, to sit down and do that. But collectively, sometimes going through and sort of catching that, even there's stuff that I've done, uh, and I'm sure some of you who've done this work, like Jake Wu does a ton of this type of work. Like you can listen to something that you did three years ago and you'll say, how could I not have heard that? Uh, and it's just, but that's, thing is a very big and somewhat complicated language. So. Uh, I, I was just going to say one more thing about that verb, uh, diadoka. Uh -huh. So uh, when uh, Lagoon uh, tells stories, I think that's the only verb she uses, eh? Like she'll say, how, how far did you go, yechatayaka? Uh, like she doesn't use yosika uh, or yawaka or this. Th she just kind of uses this one for for everything, eh? Yeah, because I I think if if you had a speaker like Chagoon, who was a master master speaker, and if she was just telling you something that happened the other day, she would probably be using yeyawaka and yeyawsaka. But once you switch into like traditional storytelling. This seems to be the verb of choice, which is, it's an imperfective thing. And Richard Dauenhauer had this sort of theory about like when, when it switches to imperfective, it's trying to sort of call attention to something or shift to a different scene. So yeah, it's, it's certainly something you could study, but yeah, I would, I would agree. Like once they move, like if you, once the Raven book comes out and you'll see a whole bunch of this verb popping up all over the place. Okay, let's see what they say to him. Yadka. Yadka. Two words. Yadka. Y A A T. I'll accept Y high tone A. Uh, yadka. Yeah, yadka. Yeah, he does run his words together. Yadka. Translators. This food. Oh, it's a big one. Jago gain hin den a honey gach to. Jago gain ka hin den a honey gach to. Jago gain. Someday I won't be the only one spelling stuff too. but we gotta move along oh, sorry I'll move along it's okay okay so a honey gachtu. Yahan. I think it sounds like a, uh, but I think it's it. Oh, that makes more sense. Four words. I think there's four words left. A honey gachtu. I had kidney instead of just. I think it's just kedain. I don't think you can put a suffix on that. But I think you have kedain either e chani or a chani. It sounded to me like ta chani. Kedain a chani gachtu. A honey gachtu. A honey gachtu. Then a honey gachtu. I do hear some kind of vowel before the honey. I think, I think he goes kadain and he starts to say yay, but then he stops and says ichani. 
then he goes back to yay. So the other thing with this too, is you'll find a number of false starts, which happen all the time in every single language where someone starts to say something and then they sort of backtrack and then they just like, he goes to, the, I think he goes to the verb and then he backs up and then he says the, the directional thing and then goes back to the verb. That's my theory. Then a honey got to. Then a honey got to. Who's a honey? a honey. I do think it's honey. It might be a honey, but for clarification purposes, I might suggest that. We can also, we go ask him to. Now the verb. Okay. It's not the same verb in the couple lines up. That's the same thing that I had to put something somewhere. Okay. Why does the classifier disappear on that? Oh, because it's future. Okay. Yeah, it's a zero. Okay. And we put a little bit of water carefully there. Where? Like, uh, like, like in your vicinity, next to you. I like how they're specifying like where everything is because they're blind. It just makes sense. You know? Yeah, right? It's like we're going to put this right next to you. You okay? Um, observation. I did not find gogank anywhere in the dictionary. Is that an oversight or was there something that I should have been doing to try to find it? Hmm. <sighs> Good question. Do I not have Jai Gugink in there? I think I saw it. Oh, okay. I see. Um, I guess, let's see, let me show you folks. So it is there, but I should also add with a GU, which is usually how, I don't know why I have two O's in there, but I think it's fine either way. No. Ayegu gink is a little bit. Yegu gink is, uh, it's a small non-human thing. Thanks for pointing that out. I will add uh -huh. the, the variation. Yeah, I'm just looking Gugank, and I like. Yes, and, and some of like these are things like, so this particle cha, and its cousin ch have a whole bunch of different things that like you just have to remember them as a group. Um, and some people say chaye Uh There was a guy who worked at Costco, and. Um, he was a tall, older native guy, I think from Cake, maybe. Someone said, hey, you know that guy at Costco who checks your receipts? And I said, yeah. And he said, he speaks Tlingit. And I was like, no way. I'm going to talk to him. He's not alive anymore. But he was. So I go there, and uh, he's a big, tall guy. I'm, I'm, I get excited when I find out people speak Tlingit, and I also get intimidated. So he was like going through my receipt and I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And I said, and he stops, and looks at me and goes, and then he keeps going on the thing. It's so fun. Okay, so we'll put a little bit of water and food next to you. 
How come there's an I on uh, Han? That's... I didn't know you could. I didn't know you could possess your next tunus. That is a very good question, and I don't know. I just I know people have said to me, I think it's just a peg vowel myself. Um, just because just so you can get a little separation between that and the next thing that's coming. You could say um, George Davis once told me, if you want someone to sit really close to you, you say But I told that to someone else, they said, why don't you say I was like, okay, fine. <laughs> good questions. I always, I always ask the questions. Take a good. 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 Pretty sure there's a K in there. Take a good. That's coming out a little fast, yeah. Two words. Well, it has T L E. The committee accepts Tleich. Okay. Yes. I hear age and I hear it like yagi. It's kegi. So Tesla speakers say yagi. Other places people say yagi. Other people say yaki. Kegi. Which would be? One day. One day. Okay, away. Hey, the knuckle and the art duck. 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 That's complicated. Hey, the knuckle and the art duck. So far, go ahead. Is the first word a hey, like H E? Yep. Hey, do knock. To do. Knock. Oh, knock. Like standing? Uh, this is a different knock. Uh, there is, knock would be like absolutely. Is yeah. it the leaving one? To leave behind, yes. Um, um. Oh. Oh, and the I think you have a little bit of a false start there too. Uh, and Is the false start the what sounds like the rounding at the end of knock? It's that. Hey, do knock on the No away. Hey, do knock. I think he started to say maybe what? Like this. Is, okay, Anna. Oh, this is no joke, pretty complicated. Um, and let me, let's talk about why this would be a complicated thing. So I think the other day we were talking about all these different sort of ways you could conjugate of like, let's say this verb, let's say yas, at, and then uh, yan, to, at, and ya, nai, at. I think these are the three ways you can sort of get this verb happening right now, uh, which we can also say 
uh, Hasbu art and we could say Wutuwa art and we could say Yi art. So these ones, Yasnaat, how would we translate that? Uh, like we're going together? It's not we. Or they are going together? They all are going. They're just going. But then we get to yan to at. We are going. Yan nai at. You're all? Y'all are going? And these could also be walking, right? That could. That's another way we could translate that. So then we get to... They all went. They all went. We went. So there is a fourth subject option here. And we have learned the fourth person as do, right? We, ye, daya, du, ka. People are doing it, right? Duhayat, it's an edible thing. Du is um, it will we'll see it all the time as the verb is happening or people are doing it. When we get the fourth person in motion verbs, sleeping verbs, and positional verbs, it's going to be a uh, switches to this unusual one. It's in the object spot. For whatever reason, so ya ana at people are going, and then you'd have awa at people went. So this goes into your little book of exceptions where it's just one of those things where you've got to remember. So that is why you have a uh, here. What are those categories again? Of when it will change to a, uh. it will be for motion verbs. I'll write. I'll make. I'll make a note right here. Motion verbs, sleeping verbs, and positional verbs. So, like, we'll just go find a couple of them before we go, and then we'll come back and translate this kind of complicated from here. Let's see. I don't have too many things. Here. Okay. So if we go look at it's probably gonna be under ta. Oh no it's not. But it would be a ta. Someone is sleeping. And it would be awata. Somebody slept. But I I don't know if it will be in here under he for the so there's a plural for sleeping which would be he and so I don't think they have it here either so but it, it would be our uh, heu and it would be a but I bet you it's under maybe under hun and maybe Is under there a reason it becomes a uh, or just because they want to confuse us more. Say that again. Is there a reason that it that it goes to uh instead of duh, or is it just because they want to confuse us more, just and we think we're starting to understand it? I don't. Hesh <laughs> would It builds character. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I think <laughs> Schenge is always just like, wait, there's more, right? It's just always, it's just always got a new thing for us. Um, what's that looking for? Oh, hun. So here's to be standing. Uh, a hun. There it is. Someone is standing, right? And then uh, you probably have it under knock. And, and so you will see it. It does pop up. It's not a constant though. And so it's it's just one of these things where you got to kind of remember because you could say, I. Okay, so you could say. All right, we'll do it next time. We'll do it next time. Um, 
We'll do the running verbs next week. So here's anatach. I think what you've got here is a there's this other kind of complicated thing where you can have a minus i classifier and just the conjugation prefix popping up. And that means after this thing happened. So if you said um, I think I, th I don't know what the stem would be here. Chanagut would be after I went there, or, or you know, after I went there, um, after this thing happened. And then you also have dach attached to it, which is another way to say from that time. So, for example, you could say, uh, I know you could say, yadak chat siti yidach, I think is how you say it, from the time I was a, a, a boy, an adolescent boy. And then, um, but here, you're sort of really sequencing things. You're saying, after this happened, this other thing happened. So I think what you're saying here, coming back to, hey, du nach ana at dach. Here, some time after the people left him. I think that's kind of what you've got there. And then you get to the next thing, which is... Um, we'll have to pick up here. The weekend cliffhanger. Uh, and let me find this video and put it in the chat real quick. Uh, that's cool mask. So if you go to... This is the last thing, then we'll get out of here. The UAS website. And I think if you type in Clinkit Conversations, it'll get you to this web page, which is in Aya Yuch We are conversing. And then we're going to go. Uh, these are wonderful things. If you're looking for ways to just hear more Clinkit and to just engage in it, these are absolutely fabulous. Um, Chak Alice Taff had noticed there's lots of documented Tlingit, but of that documented Tlingit, almost all of it was one person telling big stories, making big speeches. And she thought about this and said, well, what about just conversations? So she did this project, got funding, and uh, did this wonderful project recording incredible speakers having conversations. One of them, is, uh, well, there's a couple of them, a few of them, I think, that have Walter Sobolov, uh, and there's one of them that I was thinking of that I need to find. This one. So here is the link. I'll put this in. So this is such a cool project because uh, you can hit play. Yeah. And then you could pause it and you can hit play and it shows you the text as you're encountering it. So this is a 43 minute video at some point over the weekend between now and Monday, I would like you all to just watch it. And that's all you have to do, just engage, think of things that you, you think are um, neat. I think I have a transcript of this whole conversation, so I'll try and find it. I'll put this link in our class on our class webpage and also the transcript to it so you can read along in other ways. What was the name of the parent page of it? Said so UAS Klinka Conversations and then Wush in Aya Yuchatutla Atk. So this is we are conversing together. Which I think if you look at our class 
videos, all of them probably start with Wuchi Nyu Atutle Atka. With our whatever we I try to have a bit of a conversation at the beginning of every class. Okay. Anything else before we go? I had an observation. Um, somebody sent me a YouTube link, and on YouTube, you can slow things down, and it actually still sounds like normal speech instead of dro really dropping the register. I don't know if it's possible to do that with Elon, but it was really helpful to me to be able to slow it down to 50% and still and understand things. Yeah, I think Elon does allow you to slow it down, but I'm not sure. Uh, you so can slow it down, but it like really makes it low. Yeah, I think it chops it into pieces, maybe. Like, I don't know what the process is. And so, yeah. And so sometimes, like, this video is on YouTube, hopefully without. If there's subtitles on there, I better delete them. But... Dang it. Don't go looking for the answers. Get them from your mind in the books. Okay. Uh, this is the work. This is fabulous stuff. If you feel like you're frustrated for any reason, like just don't be. Like this is a huge step in your Tlingit journey. And you'll be able to tell people, I remember when I first started listening to videos and writing stuff down. And now I'm so good at it and blah, blah, blah. Because it'll come. It will. Stick to it. Good cheese. Good cheese. Good cheese. 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 Cheese.